Today, we're discussing how to survive an entire horde of them zombie jerks without firing a single shot. Now, we've got a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's get to it. In Seven Days to Die, one of the most unique and exciting features is Horde Night. Every seven days, a giant horde of zombie jerks comes knocking on your door. You cannot run, you cannot hide, they will find you, and if you're not careful, they will eat you. So in order to avoid becoming dinner for them zombie jerks, you must construct a horde base. However, many horde base designs are rather expensive. Not only do you have to obtain the resources in order to build and maintain your horde base, but you also need a whole lot of ammunition. The later you progress in seven days to die, the harder the zombies get to take down, meaning you're going to have to expend a whole lot more ammunition. The resource grind to maintain your ammunition stockpiles can be cumbersome. So what if I were to tell you that there is a way to survive Horde Night without firing a single shot? Well, that is exactly what we're going to discuss today, folks. I am going to show you how to design a horde base that will allow you to survive them zombie jerks without having to expend a whole bunch of ammo. Now, the key to designing an effective horde night base in Seven Days to Die is controlling the zombie pathing. You want to design your base in a way that puts the zombies exactly where you want them. And one of the easiest ways to do this is to create an elevated walkway. So as you see here, I have a simple elevated fighting platform with a single block wide stairway and elevated walkway connected. This simple layout will cause the zombies to path up the stairs, straight across the elevated walkway, and towards the fighting platform. Next, we're going to try to slow the zombies down just a little bit. By adding in these blocks here, it will cause the zombies to have to stop and jump to get over these obstacle blocks. Now make sure you put at least two blocks of space between each of the obstacles, otherwise the feral zombies will just run right over the top and not be slowed down at all. Now we're going to add in one of the most effective Horde Knight weapons in Seven Days to Die, the Robotic Sledge. Now in order to maximize the effectiveness of this weapon, you will want to make sure to add in a few modifications. But the most important of these are the Rad Remover and the Weighted Head Mod. The rad Remover will remove the ability of the zombies to regenerate health, and the Weighted Head Mod will increase the chance of knocking zombies down. You'll also want to get your Robotics Inventor perk maxed out to level 5. That will give your Robotic Sledges plus 20% to attack speed, and also give you the ability to put down two Robotic Sledges at the same time. And also be on the lookout for the Tech Junkie book series, especially book number 7. This will grant your robotic sledge an additional plus 10% attack speed. The combination of these things will make your robotic sledge absolutely awesome. Plop down a couple of blocks right here on the side of the walkway, place the robotic sledge on top of those blocks, and our horde base is almost complete. All we have to do now is enclose our fighting platform, add in a couple of bits here and there, and we are good to go. And the basic AFK horde base design looks something like this. As you see, I've enclosed the fighting platform, putting up some walls, slapping on a roof. That way, if any cops show up on Horde Night, they will not have line of sight on your character, which means they will not spit. I've added in a vault hatch at the entrance of the fighting platform and placed a door in the back wall to give us an avenue of escape. Because in the zombie apocalypse, you always need to give yourself a way out, just in case things go wrong. On top of the fighting platform, I have placed down a few SMG turrets, and these are there just to take care of them stupid birds. Now I can just stand in the corner of my horde base, sit back, and enjoy the show. I will be able to survive the entire horde night without firing a single shot from my weapon. So now that our basic design is built, let me demonstrate this bad boy in action. It is day seven.
7,000, and in just a few moments, a giant horde of them zombie jerks will be paying us a visit. However, I'm going to park my happy butt right here in the corner, detach the camera, and we're just gonna sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Now for this horde, I've cranked it up all the way to 64 zombies. And as you can see, the zombies path up the stairs and across the walkway. They reach the obstacle blocks, they stop, they jump, they stop, they jump, and they continue making their way down the elevated walkway until they reach our robotic sledges. Once they get within range of the sledge, it gives them a good smack. They fly off the walkway down to the ground and start the loop again. They they will go round and round and round in circles like this all night long. Meanwhile, I am safe and sound inside. I will easily be able to survive the night without firing a single shot. And there is the morning bell. Good morning, crazy world. The horde night is over, yet I have not moved a muscle. This simple horde-based design allowed me to survive the day 7,000 horde with zombie spawn set to max without me having to fire a single shot. Now keep in mind, folks, that this is a very simple design that was built for the purpose of demonstrating this concept in action. This basic design can easily be modified to fit your Horde Knight goals. Simply add in some twists and turns, plop down some electric traps, and you can take this basic design to the next level. Now, if you'd like to see some more Horde-based designs for Seven Days to Die, click the box in the top right corner of the screen to access my character build and Horde-based design playlist. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll catch you in the next one.